Good morning, everybody. This is Gertrude here in Wellington, New Zealand. Today's video is video number 26. And my little nuggets of wisdom this morning is three habits of highly influential people. Hi, Christopher. Nice of you to connect here in Wellington, New Zealand. It is wet. It is windy. It's a very cold summer's day. So how do you have influence on people and friends? Dale Carnegie wrote a book called How to Win Friends and Influence People. Have you ever met the kind of people who seem to just get on with almost anybody? You meet them and you watch them interacting with other people and you think, how the hell do they do that? Well, people who are good at influencing others tend not to condemn, criticize, or complain. I remember I used to have a boss who was very, very good at this. He could get his team to work really well together in a very interesting way. Um, I always felt like I never did anything wrong. And if I did do something wrong, he would approach me in such a way that he was kind of trying to help me find the solution to the problem and not really blame me for having not done it correctly. So one of the things you need to remember is that people are creatures of emotion and not, not logic. So you can never appeal to somebody on an emotional level. I mean, rather on a logical level. You have to appeal to their emotions instead. And it takes a lot of character. It takes a lot of self-control to be understanding and to be forgiving. One of my best bosses who was a man that I worked for here in New Zealand when I got my first job, he was a multimillionaire. But what he used to do every morning is I observed that he would go from everybody's table, um, desk in the office and say good morning. And once a week, he would empty out our trash cans. And coming from Africa, I found it really weird to have my own boss come and empty my trash can for me. And it was very awkward. It felt horrible. It felt icky. And I would try and grab the trash can from him and he would grab it back from me and would have this little tug of war thing going and laugh. And when I look back at what he did at that time is... That was his way of saying, look, I'm not different from you. We are at completely the same level. If anything, I am here to serve you in some way. And that was his way of doing it. Now, to contrast his behavior with the previous boss that I had in South Africa, who used to really demean his staff. Um, I remember when I moved to Cape Town, it was before South African independence. And it was during the apartheid era. I was working in an IT company, very few black people in that organization. And I was one of a small handful of females in the IT team. And because of apartheid, a lot of times black women could only get jobs as the servants or the maids. And I showed up in this IT company as a systems analyst and a project manager. And my boss would always, in his racist way, say something like, you know, during a, a meeting, halfway through the meeting, when it was time for tea and coffee, he would turn to me and say, Gertrude, it's, it's time for coffee. Basically implying that because I was black and I was female, it was my job to go and get the coffee for the rest of the team. And I decided to turn it into a joke. And I would cross my legs and say, yes, Jack, I take mine black with two sugars. And I would smile and not move. And he would get so embarrassed and everybody in the team would laugh. But I trained him how to respect me by being lighthearted about it, by joking. And everybody in my team kept saying, Gertrude, how the hell do you do that? And by the time I left that organization, he had a lot of respect for me. I didn't do it in a confrontational way. I kept it light, but I kept reminding him in every single meeting 
when he forgot that I wasn't there as the help, that I was there as part of the team. So you can influence very negative people positively, depending on how you take what they're doing to you. So that's the first thing. If you want to influence people, don't condemn, don't criticize, and don't complain. Just do what you have to do in such a way that you keep your emotions in check and work on a very logical level if you have to. So the second thing that influential people do is they give honest and sincere appreciation. Now, I learned this from one of my friends who we would go to a restaurant and we would have something to eat. And the first thing she always used to do is ask the waiter what their name was. And I remember looking at the waiters, looking really startled that, oh, they want to know my name. And we got amazing service just based on that. And in watching what she was doing, I realized that the sweetest sound in someone's ears is your voice on somebody else's lips. So people who serve you in a restaurant, people who work as a receptionist in a company and answer the phone the whole day, how many times do people actually refer to them by name? Not many. So if you can remember to do something as small as saying and asking somebody's name and repeating it back to them, it is amazing what that will do in terms of how that person relates to you in reverse. Giving compliments, everybody loves a compliment, but it shouldn't be a compliment that's insincere because people can pick up when you're not being authentic. Sincere compliments could be on how somebody's dressed, or if somebody gives a presentation and it was really, really good. You have to be honest, you have to be sincere in showing your appreciation as well. So the example with the waiter is a really good one. Um, we would get given desserts for free uh, whenever I went out to lunch with my friend. And I kept saying to her, how the hell do you do that? And she taught me a very important thing about understanding the position of the other person, how many times they're overlooked and they're right in front of your face. Number three, influential people arouse in the other person and they touch on what they eagerly want. Um, if you can touch on what somebody wants and focus on that and emphasize that, you can really help them change completely. For example, a lot of parents try and get their kids not to smoke, for example. But if you try and preach to them and tell them that smoking is bad, you can't do this, you can't do that, the best way to do it is to show them that if they want to get on the track team or if they want to excel in their athletics, smoking is going to affect their lungs and they won't be able to reach that goal. So focus on what that person wants then you can really help them turn it around. When I mentor and coach people to write their books, I always tell my authors that the best way to teach someone anything is by showing and not telling. Nobody likes to be preached to. But if you can show the other people how to do what you're saying and illustrate it in an example, in a case study, in a story, Storytelling is one of the most powerful ways to educate and teach. If you can wrap your lesson in a story, people will get it, people will love it, and you can communicate anything you want in a very, very powerful and influential way. Now, in using social media, now I use social media a lot, and I've become really good at connecting with people who don't know me in person by paying attention to how they pay attention to me. So for example, I have Jeanette, I have Zebi in Sweden on this call, Gabby, I've got Neil, I've got Sally. I pay attention to the people who tune in to my online videos. Why do I do that? Sometimes they will write a comment, sometimes they will share, sometimes they will like. 
And right now, Roslyn Saunders has just joined the call and she's an excellent example of what I'm talking about on how you can influence somebody you've never met through social media. Now, Roslyn has been one of my Facebook friends for well over probably nine, 10 years. And she used to like my postings. She used to comment and I would comment back and we would just have a conversation using Facebook. And one day I was going to Australia. I was having a book writers workshop in, I think it was Byron Bay. And she lives in Brisbane. And she got really excited when she saw myself posting that I was going to be in Australia that day. And immediately she jumped online and said to me, Gertrude, I'm in Brisbane. I would just love to meet you in person. Do you mind if I drive to Byron Bay for the day to meet you face to face? And so she came to meet me and we have been firm friends ever since. Whenever I go to Brisbane, I have a friend. I don't check into a hotel. She picks me up from the airport. She cooks me the most amazing food. And she's just one of the most wonderful, wonderful people I've ever met. And it was a relationship that was built using social media, built online. Um, a lot of times I get feedback from people who've read my books. Jeanette is just saying, I love your book. And I really appreciate people who give me feedback about my writing or about the little wisdoms that I share. Uh, when you write a book, it's like you're putting your whole life out there. And when you get the feedback from people who've read your material, it is just absolutely, absolutely enriching for me to get that feedback. So Jeanette, thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, so I normally friend people on Facebook who have come to one of my workshops, who've read my books and who are referred to me by friends. And they will remember me because I'm an inspirational speaker. I travel all over the world. I might not remember them by face or by name, but they remember me and I really appreciate that. So I have well over 4,900 friends on Facebook and they're not people that I know one-on-one, -on -one, but they're people who have bought my books online and emailed me and connected me with me on Facebook or people who've come to a presentation, a workshop, or a talk that I've given, I do pay attention to them because I appreciate them appreciating me. So thank you for coming on this call. I hope this helps in a little way to show you how you can influence people and make friends. A lot of my business associates are friends first, and then we do business second. So tune in tomorrow again for some more little nuggets of wisdom. This is Gertrude Mache. I'm based in Wellington, New Zealand. If you are looking for a book midwife, I can help you publish on Amazon, Kindle, and iTunes. If you're looking for a life strategist, if you're looking for a business coach, inbox me, get in touch, but keep sending me your questions. The questions that people are asking me are making me think and really stretch the knowledge that I know that I'm sharing through these nuggets of wisdom every single day. So have a fantastic day. Tune in tomorrow. And for everybody who's on the call commenting, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.